We hear it over and over. Young people are leaving the church. A new study clarifies why and could help parents and pastors better pass on their faith. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street. This is Breakpoint. You know what I'm happy to leave behind in the 2010s? All those headlines about how millennials are killing everything. Millennials are killing mayonnaise. Millennials are killing golf. Millennials are killing real estate because they spend all their money on avocado toast. Yes, those are real headlines. Well, sadly, there's at least one millennial-related headline we can't leave in the last decade. Millennials are killing churches. According to Pew Research, 4 in 10 Americans between the ages of 23 and 38 now say they are religiously unaffiliated. This is the biggest drop in religiosity between generations ever recorded. While part of the hemorrhaging is explained by the 40-year decline in mainline Protestant bodies, evangelicals are not off the hook. We cannot say that conservative theology in and of itself is enough to shrink-proof your church. The Southern Baptist Convention, for example, America's largest evangelical denomination, just hit a 30-year membership low. Young people have left evangelical churches and are still leaving, and new data can fix some of our wrong thinking about it. For instance, I've heard for years that young people who leave church during their college years will come back as if nothing can or should be done about it. Now, let's set aside for a moment what should be obvious, that we should never be okay with anyone ever rejecting Christ or his church. According to a study by the American Enterprise Institute, millennials who drop out of church often end up staying away permanently. Maybe in the past, young adults who wandered away would tend to become religious again when they got married or had kids, but things have changed, and there seems to be three main differences. First, many young adults today who leave the church never had strong religious ties to begin with. Whether their parents didn't attend services regularly or they were passed back and forth between homes with different beliefs, many young adults today weren't raised with God or his people at the center of their lives. Second, those who drop out and have gotten married tend to have a spouse who is also not religious. Now, for obvious reasons, this makes them less likely to go through the effort of making it to Sunday services or raising their families in the faith. And finally, millennial church dropouts are unlikely to view religion as a necessary part of teaching their own children morality. This is quite a change from past generations, which often returned to church after a youthful rum springa because they had kids and they wanted them to grow up to be good people. Now, another claim that I often hear these days is that growing numbers of dropouts are actually a good thing because that separates true believers from cultural Christians. Now, I get the spirit behind the claim, but it's misguided in at least two ways. First, God very often uses the culture that we're born in to introduce people to Christ. Think about it. Are you more or less likely to hear about your need for Jesus in a culture with a church on every corner or in a culture in which churches have been turned into bars? And second, the gospel still has an effect on those who come to church for the wrong reasons, like social acceptability. So what lesson can we take from all of this new data? First, the bad news. We really are losing a generation of young churchgoers, and they're probably not coming back, at least not if we stay the current course. And then the good news. We now know with even greater clarity the difference that parents make, and we can apply that with members of Generation Z, parents who prioritize church as a central part of their family life, who teach their children to take Christianity seriously, and who encourage them to marry fellow believers. They have the best chances of seeing not only their children, but also their grandchildren in the pews beside them. And that's why I'm excited to invite you to this year's Wilberforce Weekend, which is May 14th through the 17th in Washington, D.C., and especially to a very special equipping event on Friday morning of that weekend, where we focus on how to prepare the next generation of believers to face the challenges of our culture. Joining me for this special training event will be Sean McDowell, Brett Kunkel, Jay Warner Wallace, and Natasha Crane. Come to WilberforceWeekend.org to learn more and to register. Again, that's WilberforceWeekend.org.